Wednesday, Dublin calling Barcelona, looking for a little bit of a shot of digital health, Eugene. <laughs> oh man, I, I needed the shot of energy. Uh, it's been, uh, well, I think we, for our viewers and listeners, I la landed last week. It's just been like craziness all throughout. Lots of paperwork to do still here. Uh, Spain is very bureaucratic, seems like, but we'll figure it out. So, uh, and you, you needed the shot as well. Um, by the way, I'm very embarrassed. I only have water. I still, believe it or not, don't have any cervezas or anything. So we're going to just drink water. Yeah. Let's pretend it's vodka. We're going to hydrate. We're going to hydrate. Yeah, no, we, um, you know, it, it definitely, I, I can feel we're going in like, like everywhere in the world. We feel like, you know, we, we're going into this like second wave um the the irish market was getting locked down now so we're in like a six-week lockdown you know where they're really trying to restrict movement um so you know i was you know like i think like a lot of us like i was dealing with you know my parents you know they had uh, gotten uh, diagnosed with the the thing in majiggy and um, <laughs> I, and, sorry i'm not laughing about that i just i <laughs> It's the term that you decided to use because we're not allowed. But fortunately, they uh, they 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 look fine now. And then you know, my son is going off to school, so I, I I'm sure my circumstances like everyone's going exactly through the same way. And like I probably like you, I'm called on to do a lot of positivity, you know, <laughs> positivity. But I definitely felt the weight. I felt the weight this week, you know. Um, so Listen, I, if you if you threw in, I had to move to Barcelona on top of it. Like you know what I mean. Well, I think we talked last time we land in here and all of a sudden restaurants and bars are closed down, right? We even when we yeah. flew into uh, Madrid, that was on a lockdown. Luckily, from the airport out, we're driving out, not into yeah. the city, right? Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. But I think for all the viewers and listeners, and I know um, it was Mental Health Day. I don't remember off the top of my head right. the days, but like you, you also mentioned, you know, we called upon for some positivity. I know yeah. I have some crazy ass down days. We all do, right? This is just human. So I think just acknowledging it and having a great friend to call or many friends to call. And sometimes, you know, one off is on one side and the other one can pep you up. So Yeah, absolutely. No, no, thanks. So I, I, I appreciate the call this week as you were doing the, you know, okay, Jim, stop whining, just suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, That's and then I will call you and start whining a little. We, we all need a little uh, whining. Uh, yeah, it, it's one of those things. I, I know we're bringing a guest on here, but we I was just on the phone with, um, you know, with uh, Ken. Uh, what's Ken's last name from Silver Cloud, the CEO of Silver Cloud? Ken Cowell, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Ken Cowell. And he was talking about how now, you know, with your point of mental health now, it's it's like saying you had anxiety before would have been embarrassing. And now it's like, Hey, that's just the way it is now. So it's kind of normalized a lot of that stuff. Anyways, on that note. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so on that note, I'm just taking notes today, not actually on paper, but on, on my, uh, my phone. Um, yep. so I'm not, I'm paying attention to you and the guests that we're bringing on. And, um, you know, I know we kind of tossed, uh, because on one side, while we got it started from an idea at the bar, I right. think this gentleman who will introduce really pushed us into this and pushed us forward into it and been super helpful through this and supportive. So I'll announce and I'll let him introduce himself, but Dan Kendall, the, the man of this hour or 35 to 40 minutes. Right. He's kind of like the godfather of shot of digital health a little bit, right? Like he was. He uh... is, he is. He is a <laughs> godfather of shot of digital health and there he is. There he is. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. <laughs> we, just, we just called you the kind of like the godfather of shot of digital health, Mr. Kendall. Oh, that's yeah. an honor and a privilege. I, um, I, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to having you guys over to my place here. And uh, as you can see, I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> looks good. Uh, it looks good. Looks good. We, a little bit of touch up there on the photo. Can be all set. <laughs> Man, why didn't I get some liquor today? I, this would have been perfect. Dude, I am so prepared. I'm such a fan of your show. I mean, look, I got my own sign, right? I, I got, I got right, the COVID right. sign. I got the drink ready to go. Uh, all right. I, I'm sitting here staring at the camera, wanting to make sure that I'm ready for you when you guys are ready. So it's good to this, see you. This is perfect. Well, you know, we we always suck at 
introductions. Um, so <laughs> we're going to actually leave it to you. And I think most of the viewers and listeners will absolutely know you, but just for the ones that, you know, as we go in mass media here, you know, maybe right. do a little right. bit of your own right. introduction. They, they might know me as the one asking the questions as opposed to the one answering them. So, um, yeah. well, what's there to say? I'm Dan Kendall. I'm another American over here in Europe. Seems to be a lot of them. I spoke to a couple of them today already, and now I'm speaking to you guys. So uh, it seems yeah. like we're, for some reason, wanting to leave the U.S. I'm not sure what that's about. But um, <laughs> it's like a virus. It's like a virus. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I've been over here for about 17, almost 18 years um, and came over with a medical device company originally from Virginia. Uh, studied engineering, and my role is helping leaders, brands, and organizations connect with their audiences through podcasts and digital marketing. So that's what I do. Yeah. So 18 years. I actually, to be honest, I, I knew you were there for a while, but uh, that that's a that's 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 a long time. That's a long time. Yeah. And, was not and, and you don't have like even an inkling of a British accent. No, no. Sometimes when I play back a recording on my phone that I've made of my kids, I'll right. hear myself and I'll say, what is that? You know, for some reason, when I talk to my kids, I start to pronounce my T's more and right. just uh, get a bit more proper you, in my pronunciation. You know, do you like, do you play the role of the American abroad? Like, is that like in your kind of social network or are you <laughs> like, are you that guy? I've, I've tried to play that card a few times. Uh, <laughs> recently, when we were coming back from Devon, we had a, a holiday uh, in, in Devon over the summer, and we were driving back past Stonehenge. And yeah. I said, okay, let's let's go over and check out Stonehenge. And then they had this big sign out saying, you know, you must have pre-booked this. You can't go in. So I said, okay, kids, just yeah. leave this to me. <laughs> <laughs> right. I just pulled up there and so played the, uh, I'm an American visiting here. Can't I get in just to see the place? <laughs> right. The guy was not happy. I, so, I uh, got I this, right. <laughs> so, so Dan, what is, I mean, well, I, I'm going to ask you a question, you, the usual question, you know, the, the sign you held up, uh, we were just, before we let you in, we were kind of describing a little bit what's happening in, in, in Ireland and at least here in Barcelona, not necessarily all of Spain. What, what's going on in the London area? Just for so I'm about uh, an hour train ride southeast of, of London, so almost halfway exactly between London and the southern coast, or as I like to tell my American friends, I'm in the county just above France, which makes it sound a bit more European. Um, so, you know, it's getting worse over here, as, as expected. Yeah, I know, I'm trying to adopt it uh, and, and you know, stay a little bit European, even though we're Brexiting. Um, so it's getting worse. And, uh, you know, the, the lockdowns are happening. The tier three, the new system that Boris has announced is, uh, is taking effect in various cities. And uh, now up in Scotland, they're beginning to, or they've actually announced a similar system and program for uh, the cities in Scotland, locations in Scotland. So um, it's getting worse and it's kind of expected, right? I mean, we knew as we started right. spending more time indoors and, uh, yeah. you know, people got fed up with social distancing that this was gonna happen. Right, right. Yeah, I have to say, like, um, I got my flu jab today. We ran a like health beacon. We ran our our flu vaccine clinic, you know, inside nice. the uh, inside the office today. But like, it's it's a bit like we're in the same same exact boat, man. And like, you know, talk about people having some oxygen. We were just talking beforehand. We we're giving out before you joined us. Like, you know, people having oxygen in the tank to deal with this next like. You know, are, are you doing on your series? Are you digging into this subject at all? Like, like, how are you? How are you? A little bit. I mean, you can't ignore it, right? I mean, uh, right. there are so many podcasts that have come out that are really diving deep. I mean, actually, we've been helping to produce some of them that are going in deep around COVID-19 and and the impact <laughs> <laughs> you guys included. But uh, you can't ignore it. It's, I mean, it's a fact of our life now. So we have to, to bring it up. But I try to think about it in the context of everything else that we're doing. Like, how are you? Yeah going to address it from here now that we know what we've got yeah. in some respects we certainly know more than we did in february right now where we are we're ending 2020 in an entirely different way than we thought we were going to uh, have 2020 when we started it now we're looking at the year ahead 2021 what lessons can we learn what sort of preparations can we have as we go ahead into the future and take the this new reality into uh, account and set our plans and goals to still do the things that we have to do, both you know, starting from within with what we have to do for ourselves, as well as the people that we serve and the organizations that we work within. We, we keep trying to ignore it, 
but it's not working. I mean, it's <laughs> it's it's hard to. So so Dan, I know uh, you know eighteen years in UK, right? Um, what actually made you? I mean, we're just following kind of your footsteps, you know, uh, dragging ourselves out of you know Wednesday to Wednesday, doing the videos. You know, thank you for helping us through. That's why you're the godfather of getting a lot of this stuff set up. But what what actually like was there something click like digital health podcasts? I mean, like what clicked for you when you decided to set this up back in the day? Well, I, I guess the the sort of short version of it is you know I, I had a radio show when I was in college and I studied engineering and I've always been sort of a builder and creator and I've always worked between really clever clinicians who know the problems that they're facing and want ways to solve them and really smart engineers and researchers and scientists that know how to create those materials or solutions and products. Um, and when and I was you, doing, they, and you have the radio voice, like that's what I like, <laughs> no, got totally radio, radio voice. Totally. Right, right, my, like my kids it, make I'm so much fun of me. And problem solvers with the radio voice in between. My, my kids make so much fun of me with that because they, they hate it when I start to record it. Actually, I, I wish I could show it to you. I have this great video where the kids were lip syncing with me. On They were listening to the podcast on the radio in the car and they and they were video, so, uh, videotaping themselves. Uh, you know, welcome to Digital Health Today, the place to be to get the insights of leaders. And I was like, oh. They man, should have could... put that on TikTok. Maybe you become yeah. TikTok famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't follow them. I got them all locked down. They can't. They can't go into those accounts. Um, but back in 2015, I was consuming a huge amount of podcasts. I was traveling a lot to the states. I was listening to audiobooks. I was listening to things around technology and innovation and investing and all sorts of things that were related to what we all work in and health innovation. But they weren't specifically around what we were doing. And you know, I'd go to Health 2.0 and I'd go to the Hims meeting and I'd go to these various places and CNS Summit and I'd and I'd see these great speeches and talks about what was happening and there'd be maybe 20 people in the room uh, or maybe 200 sometimes but once they gave the message it was gone okay and i'd say and, and i talked to people here in europe and they'd say oh we need to know this i'm like well, there's a guy over there who just gave a presentation about it but you can't find it because you know you didn't buy a ticket and you know i, I don't remember the guy's name and it was uh, you know, 12 o'clock on the tuesday in santa clara so I just decided, why not create a podcast? There's got to be a better way of sharing information than sort of one to one me sharing it with people. How can I do it one to many? And since I had the radio show, I called up a friend of mine who I had the radio show with. And uh, he became a recording engineer after we graduated. And I asked him, hey, Dennis, you know, how hard is it to start a podcast? And like a good friend, he, he lied to me and said it was easy. So I just said, all right, let me to start this out and see what That's it's like. That's just called encouragement. You can do it. <laughs> if I had known, honestly, guys, if I'd known how hard it was, I probably wouldn't have done it, like a lot of things in life, right? So if I'd known how difficult it was, I probably wouldn't have done it. So I'm, I'm grateful that I didn't realize how uh, much work actually creating a podcast is. Yeah, and you've tried a lot of things. Like you've networked, you've kind of, you've built out a network of people to help you do interviews. You've done, like how many interviews have you done? We've done over 100, uh, somewhere around 110, 115 or something. Um, okay. But that, that's numbered interviews. We also have coffee talks that we do with sponsors to help them share some of their experience and authenticity with the audience. Yeah. Uh, not to talk about how great they are, which they are great, but to really talk about sort of their role in enabling digital health innovation. But man, it's been just an incredible journey. And you know, I've, I've been so pleased to be able to be a part of what you guys are doing because I really admire the, you know, the fact that you guys have just em embraced this. You became a student of the game. Uh, you've figured out how to edit. Not very good students. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say how good a student you were. No, you're well, great. I, I mean, look, bottom line is you're, you guys are doing it. And how many people are talking about this and they don't do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're just doing so, this so we can hang out with each other for an hour and have our wives and have a drink and bring out people like you. Whatever works. It's like, a, actually, you know, they, usually you didn't know this, that uh, Dan was part of the famous J.P. Morgan Irish pub night. I know. Uh, how the hell did I miss that one? Like, every, every single, I think like, like half the people that have been with us, they're like, Irish pub. I'm like, where the hell was I? Uh, like 80% of our invests were at the pub at the same exact night, yeah. you know, and it was yeah. like, you know, people from Novartis to you to Rashida was there to, you know, it was just, and we ended up having um, the late night food with we Rashida. We did. And, yeah, uh, me, Rashida, you, and somebody else, a friend of Rashida's, I think she was staying with or something. In right, San that, that, that was from, that it spoke fluent 
Japanese, but grew up in like yeah, Oakland, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, ah, well, yeah, yeah. I, I, I missed it. Dan, Dan, I, I don't know how you this. missed it, Dan. I, I, I don't know I, either. I, I, I was gonna say we can repeat it again, but it's gonna be a couple of more Januarys, I think. There's but, a thousand uh, people in that pub that night, but it wasn't that big a pub, right? It was like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but everyone's been on the, it was like the genesis of this one. And I, I'd seen you earlier that night of JP Morgan, you know, over with the, you know, took my scooter over. To the Is that where, when you two first met? No, when we first no, met, no, no we met at a course for Health XL event in London, of course, Health XL, hmm. that, that's oh, a, a prominent feature in your podcast and that pub. So those two things yeah. account for about 98% <laughs> of Jim's social circle, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I don't go up, uh, like I, I've always had my own bubble. People think of me as this great extrovert, but I'm actually. <laughs> hey, we, we, all, we, all, we all switch, right? It, it's impossible, actually. I think it's impossible to be an extrovert 100% of the time. And I, yeah. you know, bedtime excluded, of course. But, um, dude, I'm going to put you on the spot. You said like 110 to 120 episodes. Um, mm -hmm. Was there someone, and you can choose to name or not name, but uh, was there someone that like declined? And said, "Nah, I, I just not not interested. I don't want to do it." And then probably regretted it later. Or no, I, I've never had anybody that I've invited to come on decline. Actually, that's not true. I've I've never had a company that I've invited to come on decline. I've had individuals within companies decline. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you, I mean, and, and maybe I'll, I'll use this as an extension and invitation to your audience. Um, one of the frustrating things I have is that when I get on the phone with someone and I do sort of a pre-call and we talk about all the different things, and oftentimes it's a woman who calls me and says, hey, we'd love to talk about what's happening. And they just are, are such subject matter experts and we have a great conversation. I say, great, when can we schedule an interview? And they say, well, let me put you in touch with my CEO or the CTO or the CMO. And it's like, right. whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you know, I want to talk to you. Going to talk about it. But what, what about you? And exactly. and often they defer. Um, and, and part of that's because of their role in communications and their 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 role is to get some of these other folks uh, exposed. But I, I have had um, you know a few women that I've invited to come onto the podcast that have deferred to male colleagues, and I'm always the one to say, hey, you know, really there's a space for you here, and I want you know whatever concerns you have, let's address those so that we can you know utilize right. the space. So that's one of the things, especially having seen what Lisa, Lisa Sunan did and some of the things that she pointed out in all the events that we've traditionally gone to. When I look through some of my own guest lists, uh, I found that I had not been proactive enough in trying to make sure that I was uh, extending an, an opportunity for people that didn't necessarily look like the three of us. Um, and that, that you know, and, and, hey, you, you guys are not bold. You guys are not bold. God bless them. God bless them. <laughs> <laughs> nothing personal, nothing personal. But look, you know, we, we got to do it. I mean, there, there are folks out there. They just need invitations and the opportunity uh, and the and frankly, the awareness and sometimes a little bit of encouragement. And, and I remember watching something on uh, I think it was HBO about Eddie Murphy and about how he gave Chris Rock his chance. And I don't know if you guys know that story. Um, yeah, vaguely, but well, Chris Rock basically he wanted to be at that famous comedy store, or comedy um, yeah. Uh, club yeah, the comedy in, store in, in California. Yeah, in New York, yeah. he wanted to be on stage, and and he would always show up early to like clean up tables and do anything he could, hoping that some of the comedians that would right. drop out or whatever that he'd get a chance to go on stage. And Eddie Murphy showed up. Wait, back this is back in the '80s or something and said to the owner, Eddie Murphy had made it by then, obviously, and, and said, you know, what black acts do you have on tonight? And the guy said, uh, Chris Rock. And, right. and, uh, and he was going to leave if it hadn't been for that. And, and then Chris Rock got his chance on stage and they hit it off and that gave Chris Rock an opportunity. So sometimes you just have to be a little proactive and saying, hey, who else right. can, can we include uh, in these conversations that we might not already know that if we just take a time to, to extend an invitation, we can find them. Right, right. So we, we definitely need to get out of that 90% Irish bar and the health Excel, <laughs> even though that's pretty <laughs> di di diverse, <laughs> diverse, 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 diverse crowd. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually, <laughs> Manny was there, Rashida was there, and yeah, we had a good time. Right, yeah. right, right. Well, you know, the, I mean, I think you're, I mean, just listening to you talk about your setting up your podcast, like it's kind of the antithesis to us. He's so well prepared. <laughs> He's kind of so well prepared. He's doing the pre-interview. You know, with the people versus an exchange from WhatsApp. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, and 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 it's like, wait, who do we have this Wednesday or next Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> but but Jim, I don't know if I told you this. Uh, I think I'm gonna start cheating on you soon nice. because <laughs> and 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 um, much more produced. So I've been talking yep. to Dan around kind of co-producing a digital health series on digital therapeutics, but that's going to be sort of more professionally done. I may actually, right. I don't know about if I'm going to put on a suit, but we'll figure that out. Um, no, you did mention that. And I, I a hundred percent endorse it and I'll definitely oh. exercise my finger to look, to subscribe. <laughs> I, was, I was sweating it a little bit here. <laughs> No, no, you yeah. told me. No, listen, no, we had kind of like, yeah, no obligations here, man. <laughs> We're just trying to get through this thing. <laughs> no obligations. Yeah, actually, you just reminded me. I had this other, this other uh, oh, one as well. That. Actually, and this is good. <laughs> this is like, you know, hit subscribe. So for the listeners out there. I think it's there, Dan, man. For the listeners yeah. out there, Dan has a picture of us in his background and now has like hit subscribe, leave a review. So listeners, Watchers, please get us to the. Right. Actually, I think the Chris Rock story may kind of get us closer to Joe Rogan. I don't know. I'm gonna try to right. start tagging. But I want to talk like, uh, like, because you're an expert in this. Now, is is this like real talk thing, right? Like, so like a lot of our theory of even is you know like what is like the pub event. That's so you you know like sitting in the pub and just kind of shooting the shit, right? And yeah and then have a conversation and before you know it you know like an hour's passed and you you know you, you wouldn't give that you know you love the time you spent with someone talking about it and mm -hmm. there's a little bit of like you're talking to someone you respect maybe their expertise their perspective their humor you know and it's this whole confluence of things and and like am i like that gets engineered out of a lot of communications it's like you know like how do we engineer like that real so, so are you guys going to do a real like how are you thinking about this digital therapeutics thing um, well, I personally have not thought far enough. We actually have a call tomorrow, I think. We do, in the morning. Um, yeah. I, do, I do have an, oh, great. I have a couple of hours tonight and tomorrow. <laughs> <But> no, <laughs> um, no, actually, um, uh, I, I won't disclose until that person uh, you know, fully agrees. Right. But I think um, some of this will be kind of supported by you know, actual research around this stuff. And um, we're gonna right. have some themes around it, um, but you know more more to come. But it, it it will be much more research than what you and I do, aka who are we yeah. having on in twenty four hours? <laughs> <laughs> but but isn't that what's ha Dan? Isn't that even since you started yours back into like isn't that what's happened to these podcasts now? Where where there's so much audio being consumed right now that. Yeah. that you can only consume you can only consume so much that you know you know like it's not the it's not the news anymore like have you changed have you think you've changed your style in terms of interviewing or thinking about that well i think uh, you know we've been really busy over this this covid 19 period uh to to <laughs> <laughs> um to 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 retool what we're doing because when i when i started this podcast i didn't think it was going to be a business i'll be really candid yeah. about that i i thought it was just gonna be a hobby a way to serve a way to connect with some people that i already knew and liked and people that i wanted to meet and admired what they did and and really it's just grown and th thanks to support from you know eugene when he was at uh, buyer and and michelle longmire at medibol those were the two individuals that gave me sort of the the confidence to say uh yeah we will we'll participate and we'll go forward with it and now it's just absolutely grown and at the time when i started it in 2016 it was really a niche to talk around digital health but now digital health has expanded in so many different areas that you know there's more things that that i know need to be talked about that i don't necessarily have the expertise and authenticity and authority subject matter authority to be able to speak to and so that's why we've taken the digital health today uh, show and instead of it being just the dan kendall show we're going to create a eugene borhovich uh, podcast, a Jen Lannon podcast, and a Tony Estrella podcast. And Jen's going to talk about femtech, which is something I have no authenticity or place talking about. Um, Tony's going to talk about what's happening in Asia Pacific, and he's there based in Singapore, and he's going to be able to shine a light on the leaders and the organizations and trends that are really changing things there. And then, you know, I mentioned to Eugene that, you know, I, I really know there's a need to do a digital therapeutics podcast, and that's right up his alley. And uh, so w very soon, actually, I hope to have it ready by this by this uh, interview, but we uh, don't quite have it ready yet. But hopefully next week, 
we'll have a brand new website with these four shows listed on it. Uh, actually, uh, one of them, Tony Australia, you can you can find that already on Health Podcast Network. Uh, okay. So that's down, I think, middle or bottom of the page with all the all shows there. And um, and Jen Landon will be on there very shortly. So we'll just continue to build these out. And then I'd love to have a Digital Health Today podcast around you know AI and machine learning, and another one around robotics and drones, and another one about telemedicine, and just have people drive really deep into that to really take all these you know fairly narrow sectors of, of digital health and go even narrower and get into really some of the meat and share share more expertise. Jim, I'm finally going to be famous. I'm going to be on Digital Health Today website you're, with my own professional famous. show. I'm sorry, I'm dumping you. <laughs> I think you'll like the artwork. We have, we have, you know, we decided to use some colors. I love your logo right, right over here, right? Uh, I love, I love the way you guys did that. But we're we're gonna uh, jazz it up a little bit for you, Eugene. Make it. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, If it's any indication, we're using ABC News and CNN as sort of benchmarks of how we want to design this. Uh, oh, Not wow. Fox News. <laughs> no, funny. I didn't go over there. I think my computer has an allergy to it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, okay, so then what's the prediction? So as the as the one of the the founding you know fathers of uh, of of digital health podcasting, like so what's the prediction? Like if we look now in like two years from now, is there going to be are they are they going to look more like you know like Eugene and I shooting the shit, or is it going to look more like these produced like niche thing you know you know kind of going deep on this, this scenario like. Is it just not, is like, does digital health go away? Like when we're listening on our pod, you know, what do you think happens? Uh, that's a really great question. It's something I've, I've thought a lot about. I think that uh, we're gonna see continuing uh, of, of the micro audience. So I mean, Joe Rogan, uh, you know, he's got a lot of flaws as a human being, but he's got a lot of visibility based on what he's doing with, with podcasting. It's sort of like the moment where like Howard Stern went over to Sirius Radio and, and right. took a leap from, you know, his normal sort of uh, radio over to uh, a, a different technology. Actually, Sirius, I just saw it flashed and they bought Stitcher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, there's a lot of that. acquisition, a lot of consolidation. But I think a lot of it's still going to be around trying to niche the audience down. And that's why, like with digital health today, we're going to go in further and deeper around around femtech and Asia Pacific. I'd love there's so much happening in Asia Pacific that we have to talk about uh, digital therapeutics as well. Um, but then, like with the health podcast network that we launched earlier this year, you guys are a part of it. Thank you very much for for being a part of that and sharing this podcast through Health Podcast Network. You know, now we've got over fifty shows. I think we've got uh, nearly sixty actually that are committed. Um, right. But I think about fifty five or so are actually displayed on the website at this point. Um, and I expect that's probably going to be closer to five hundred. And what we're doing there is we're we're not taking everybody who says they do a, a health podcast because they've already got Stitcher and Spotify and Google and Apple to, you know, you can go in there and you can search health. The first two years that I did my podcast, if you just put in the term digital health, Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew and Ozzy Osbourne's family podcast came out above digital health today when you just search for the term mm. digital health because their algorithms were, were indexing for different uh, ways that, that Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew and the Love Line podcast sort of uh, um, was calculated. So with Health Podcast Network, it's invitation only. We're curating the content. You're not going to find Gwyneth Paltrow's uh, Goop podcast on there. We're not going to have on the people with the green smoothies and um, you know and the, the the various other nutrition things. There's a place for all those things, but this isn't it. We're going to be focused on people and patients. We're going to be focused on evidence-based information and trusted resources to really create uh, a network for people who are looking for this information where they can find it instead of having to search through pages and pages of search results on Google and Spotify and Stitcher. So Jim, we're getting kicked out from the Health Podcast Network soon. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> yeah. well, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys can stick around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I mean, like, like a can... sideline feature. Yeah, we don't yeah, know. I, where, I we don't know where we're going this. with this. We, I think that's part of the thing. We don't, we're, we don't know who's driving the car here. We don't know where we're going with this thing. Like, we actually were thinking just to try to get everyone, just to kind of get ourselves and maybe a few people through this whole thing. And, you know, do we stop, you know, do we kind of there, you know, do we do some more? Um, we'll, so we'll take, we'll, we'll take a survey. Actually, I think every episode we should ask 
call of action for people to comment to yes or no. Shut, shut it, it down. down or keep going. <laughs> you're, you're taking too much space on the Amazon servers. <laughs> shut it down. Shut it down. No, Mark, can't take it. No, <laughs> look, I, I love what you guys are doing. I hope, you know, I, life is busy and you guys have businesses that you're running and, and, and families that you're looking after and things that, that are going on. But, you know, I really admire what you guys did. I wish more people took it. There's a lot of things that you guys did that I think are great playbooks. You did a series format. Uh, you actually started. Uh, you didn't try to master it before you started. You just got in there and started to create it. And then you sort of uh, figured out how to build the plane as you were flying it. Um, and and you're you're having these natural conversations with people who you know who uh, you know really need to have uh, more visibility about the things that they're working on and the things they're doing. So I really admire what you guys have done. So thanks for doing it. Thank you. And so let me, big, big question, Eugene, just to kind of test your credentials to run this podcast with Digital Therapeutics um, is, oh uh, is <laughs> how many right now globally? Seven. Sorry, I honestly, I, I swear to you, the, the connection broke up. So <laughs> <laughs> he's got a pause. He's got a pause button on me. The, um, Let me Google it for you. I'll WhatsApp it to you. <laughs> how many what? No, I said, how many people today are actively on a digital therapeutic right now today? Oh, from a population perspective, I honestly I think minuscule, but it will be backed up by some research um i, I think compared He's to using the, the pause button the end. dude i love it I, I, it's so perfect you're, you're freezing right in the middle but and, and, and now and, that's and all i have to say about that their iowa senator what's the price of corn <laughs> three dollars seven dollars um, no no but uh, let, let's let's see it, it's actually the connection has been pretty good this is just too funny that it, it like it, it happened during their questioning so <laughs> I, I thought you were right. asking you know how many companies there are how many people this is really <laughs> it's, 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 again yeah perfect it's okay finished. so it's um, time. let's put it this way a very small percentage of actually prescribed digital therapeutic right and 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 i think from a which we're going to get into to that in the podcast what's actually a digital therapeutic right um i've been actually personally challenging a little bit of the dta the digital therapeutic alliance on its definition that it also needs to be reimbursable by a system i'm kind of saying well it should be reimbursable out of pocket also as long as it has clinical evidence i want to pay for it right so um, the short answer, and not a political one, a small, 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 small percentage. And it will be backed up by data from one of our partners that's going to join. On this. Oh, nice. Yeah. You're gonna but I think, data. Jim, that's a perfect question. And one of the things, you know, I, I have been speaking to a lot of digital therapeutics companies over the years and telling them over the past two or three years and telling them, you need to do a podcast. Like as a company, they should start a podcast. And finally, I got so fed up that, you know, everybody's really busy. They've, they've got their stuff that they're doing. And I just sort of th thought the same thing that I did, you know, five years ago when I started Digital Health Today. I just thought, well, let's just create it ourselves. Let's just start it. And uh, because the people who need to hear about digital therapeutics are not the people that are going to the meetings that the three of us are getting together at. They're, they're the ones that are that are busy seeing patients every day. They're the ones that are going to see the doctors that they need to hear about it. And, and they need to be the ones asking about it and, and thinking about it and understanding it. So it's all those people that are busy doing their jobs and focusing on their lives that we have to reach them and inform them and take them along. They hold the keys to really unlocking the use of these products in practice. And, and honestly, then I, I don't blame these companies. I mean, you and I talked about uh, and with Marina, right, around your coach podcast, interviewing a lot of health coaches, uh, you know, and Marina talks to coaches all day long literally, but creating a podcast and a much more professional than what Jim and I are doing, right? Because it's a face of a company. It does take effort and it does take production and it does take research and it does take uh, versus a small startup that's just few people where we need to be growth hacking this shit, right? Like, you know. Right. Well, I even so. found, I found that I, you know, a lot of respect for getting to over a hundred episodes, Dan, like, like, like it's take like the consistency it's taken for us to do this every Wednesday, you know, that, you know, like that's, you know, and, and, you know, Eugene's been great kind of publishes them right away, just knocks them out. 
And so even like the setup that we say, hey, we like, like a good project, like we kind of scoped it. We said, we want to put minimal effort <laughs> and we want to do it consistently. You know, we want to do it consistently and we want it to be with like people we'd want to talk to anyway. So, and then we kind of said, and then our only criteria is that if it becomes too much work or too much fun, we stop. You know, that, or not, not enough fun, you know, so it's kind of, uh, yeah. You know, that's the- yeah, well, I, I've been watching them. I mean, I, I've been uh, bringing you guys up on my computer and then taking it into the kitchen when I'm when I'm cooking and and watching you guys and, and feeling like I'm part of the conversation while you guys are doing it. Uh, you know, video podcasting is a whole nother animal and there's not as many video podcasts out there. But I love the fact that you guys are doing it on audio only and yeah. with a video feed because I do like today when I was sitting here, I had to, I had to airplay to connected with my computer and I was watching some of your previous episodes on my big screen television while I was also working on my uh, on my computer. So I love the fact that, you know, I sort of watching you guys and having the expressions, but then also sometimes I'll just hit play and I'll go for a walk and I can take you guys with me in my pocket, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah. so sweet, Dan. <laughs> I love it. I, I have like tons and tons more question on so many things. Um, yeah. but we're, I'm, I'm just giving a little bit, we're at, you know, approaching a magic magic time um yeah like no but i I think this is like you know i i just wonder you know when we look out you know just kind of staying with this like future theme or like the digital therapeutics kind of air you know that whole kind of area is you know when we you know when we kind of forecast that like that space is impossible to forecast right now and my here's my question from either one of you was you know, sometimes when you're like, if you think about it, it's like fundamentally it's behavior change and monitoring is digital therapeutics, right? Like, or at its core, right? It's like real time monitoring and behavior change, right? Is, is two of the obvious benefits that you get with a digital therapeutic. But like right now it's seen as, you know, oh, you know, the clinician, do I want to engage in that? Like, do I want to engage in, you know, that kind of behavior change and that kind of, do I have the time? Do I have the effort? Does the system work? whatever it is, how long until it becomes clinically like, you know, at what point it's, it's, it's kind of inappropriate to not engage with it, you know? So I'm a clinician and I could, as a clinician. Yeah. Like, like, so, so for example, like not, you know, monitoring, like in the health beacon space where we monitor injectable adherence, like, like at what point does the clinician say, I, like I, someone needs to monitor that injection adherence or cardiovascular adherence for a cardiovascular, you know, monitoring device. Like at what, are we two years away from that? Three years, four years where the clinician says, Hey, these are available uh, and I didn't use it. I, I think it's, I mean, uh, and we'll be interviewing lots of, you know, leaders from that space. But I think um, right now, my gut is if you ask 10 clinicians or practitioners, nine out of 10 won't even know what a digital therapeutic is. So we got a right. long way to go to educate and my, you know, and that's why the focus on clinical validation and RCTs and proof points, and it's following very much of a pharma model to market access, right? Um, with few exceptions, which I'm actually excited to talk right. to those companies as well. Um, he wouldn't give me a number, Dan. Is it five years, 10 years? <laughs> no, I, I honestly, I would, I would say, I would say five years realistically yeah, okay. <laughs> because the the moment that like I, I read this somewhere and this goes more around team leadership but like um but i think the same applies the moment you're tired of and bored talking about the topic this is when people are actually starting to hear it so you gotta like double down right nice. so this is this is around like mission vision setting this stuff up right and if you're already like bored out of your mind on talking about it because you, you've been talking this is only when things are picking up so I, I think we got a long way to go. And if you go back to what Amada is, what, eight to 10 years old? I, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm um, yeah, so a long way to go. But I, I think five years is reasonable to start getting some level of prescriptions. What do you think, Dave? Up. Yeah, I, I think that's probably a good number. I mean, you got to look at the the size of the industry that we're trying to change. Um, you know, you've got the people involved in it. You've got the, the companies that are making these things. You've got the people who are going to prescribe it. And then you've also got a whole workforce that's 
accustomed to detailing on these these medications, uh, and they're going to need to be trained differently, and doctors are going to need to engage differently to get the information they need to be able to prescribe these things appropriately. So we're really talking about a lot of different levels of change that have to happen. But I think once at this sort of moment in our in our trajectory as a healthcare sector, I think this is transformative. Uh, I was talking with Mike Baselli, who's uh, the host of Passion and Pioneers. <clears throat> He's got another uh, podcast. You can find it on Health Podcast Network. Give that a plug. Um, but Mike uh, was a, a kicker for Stanford when he went to university there. And I was saying, you know, this, this sort of where we are in digital health right now is sort of like, you know, we're down in the game. The, uh, the offensive line has been completely beaten up. Uh, we've got seconds to go and we need to put some points on the board. And, and digital health right now, like this is our time to shine. You don't want to be in that position as a team that, that you're down and you're about to lose. But right now with this you know pandemic that's going on and COVID-19, this is our time to, to really um, uh, to shine and to show that all the things we've been talking about for 10, 15, 20 years are possible. And then you know, we're clearing a lot of these, these barriers. We're getting a lot of use. There's a, a need from the clinical side. There's a need from the, the user side. There's walls coming down from reimbursement. And, and, and even the regulatory pathways are opening yeah. up. So all those things, if they can stick around for a while, I think we'll just find some real acceleration as we go into the next you know, two and five years and we see some of these and, things coming to effect. And then it won't be digital health. It'll just be health. It'll just be health. I've been saying that since like episode number two. I said, you know, it used, know, to, know. used to talk about digital banking and now we just talk about banking. You know, it's just yeah. the way that we do things and, and you don't even expect your your bank not to have an app. Uh, right. You just expect that you're going to be able to pick up your phone and access, your, you know, your accounts and pay your bills and do whatever else. So it's going to be a, a change, um, you know, certainly of the industry, but also importantly of the user expectation that, yeah. that now they, that people like us, can't access health care that we need unless we're we actually have COVID, <laughs> and, right. and so all these different things are being. Ah, darn it! I, I said that one without holding up my sign. Sorry. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So so we we need to have people begin to think about how they can use this, you know, for themselves, yeah. for their loved ones, and and make it more of a habit. Yeah. Sorry, sorry that's a good you're... preaching note. No, I, I, I love it, Jim. I think you should be a guest on the DTX series, drilling right. in. <laughs> the, 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 wait, the, the tough question corner. <laughs> this in from a listener in Ireland. Yeah. Jim Joyce would like to know. <laughs> right, right, right. He's just getting nostalgic already. That's that's what it is. I, I got this topic got about it. the ending of Shot at Digital Health Therapy. Oh, that, 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 hold on a second. That doesn't mean just because I'm doing this, that doesn't mean that we're ending. We will, well, you know. What but. we don't know, what we don't know about it is it's like the it's like the vaccine. Like we don't know whether the world needs two shots, it needs a booster, <laughs> or whether the world just needs, <laughs> whether this is going to stick, you know? Yeah, we're yeah. trying to figure that out. I, you know? I do, I I do feel like we just need, we need to like hit that five season mark, but I, I don't know. Let's see. Well, I think note, we're, we're still going to have plenty of, of, uh, of time to do it in terms of the environment in which we're, we're operating. I think it's more like a Happy Days reunion, right? I mean, Happy Days was like 1974 to 1984. I just saw in the news that they're doing a reunion uh yeah. with uh, ralph the mouth and and uh potsy and all yeah. those folks so maybe if you guys decide to, to call it quits after any given time you can always come back for a reunion tour i mean the rolling stones are still touring well when they can perform but yeah, this is brilliant you know we, we'll finish let's say season five and then season six <laughs> you know it's the, the reunion exactly. tour <laughs> Anyway, yeah, exactly. on, on that note, I'm really trying to cut us off. We're at like 45 minutes. Yeah. I know time flies, but uh, always a pleasure. Thanks, and I will Dan. speak to you tomorrow, Dan. So. All right, guys. Great to see you. And thanks for hanging out with me in my living and, room here. And uh, leave a yeah. review, hit subscribe. Hit subscribe. I don't know what screen it is, but. Um, and your Twitter, what's your Twitter handle again? It's, it's... Uh, you can find me on Health Tech Dan and uh, Digital Health Today is D Health today and health podcast network is, is health pod net so lots of ways to get in touch check those shows out over 50 shows over 5,000 episodes on health pod net including your own and uh, a bunch of folks samir barry and new england journal of medicine and, uh, ama uh, some great uh, nurses and doctors that are on there so uh, right. uh, please do check out health podcast network awesome. most produced best radio voice <laughs> let's go for that <laughs>
Best home Over decor. Over and out. Cheers. All right, guys.